Hi, I'm Victor with Line 6 and I'd like to welcome you to this tone creation video for the Firehawk FX floorboard. Today's tonal inspiration comes from the band Pearl Jam and the song Evenflow. Now Pearl Jam does have two guitarists, both Stone Gossard and Mike McCready, but for this video we're going to focus on Mike McCready's setup. So before we get started, let's check out the gear Mike McCready was actually using and we'll work to set up his tone. According to our research, Mike used a 1988 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe tuned to drop D, so if you use a solid body instrument with a humbucking pickup in the bridge, you'll probably get pretty close to his sound. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using Line 6's Variac Standard on the Lester model. As you can see, Mike plugged his guitar into a Boss DS2 distortion pedal and then fed that directly into a Fender basement amplifier. So now let's open up our Firehawk remote app and start building the tone. I'm going to start by setting up my guitar. In the top left hand corner, simply tap the block labeled Variax to select it. Now we'll adjust the parameter labeled Model and we'll scroll until we see the one marked Lester 1. This will give us our Les Paul model in the bridge position. If we scroll down to the bottom of this window, we can adjust the tuning of the Variax to match what Mike was doing in drop D. So we want to ignore all the strings except the 6th string and bring that down one full step from E to D. For those of you without a Variax, you'll just have to do things the old fashioned way and physically detune the 6th string. Now let's set up our amplifier sound. We'll do that by pressing the amp slash cab block found in the middle of our signal chain at the top of the window. The amplifier we're looking for here is the 1958 Tweed B-Man. You could double tap the icon to select and load it, or simply tap it once and then press done in the top right part of the window. Let's have a listen to see what this amplifier sounds like. Now let's make a couple adjustments to the amplifier. I'm going to bring the drive, the bass, and the mid up while I drop the treble, the presence, and the volume. Since this amplifier is one of Line 6's HD amp models, I can actually control the power amp parameters here. So I'm going to bring the sag down, bring the hum down, raise the bias slightly, and drop the bias excursion a little bit. These controls will have more to do with how the amp feels and reacts to your playing, but they do affect the overall tone, so feel free to adjust any of these to your own preferences. We can change our cabinet and microphone models if we press the cab icon on the right hand side of the window. Here, I'm going to leave the 410 Tweed as it's pretty appropriate for the amp model we have selected, but I'm going to change the microphone from the 67 model to the SM57 angled. So our tone is off to a pretty good start, but let's match what Mike was doing in his actual rig by putting a distortion pedal in front of our amplifier. We'll do this by selecting one of the effect blocks labeled Stomp in our signal chain. Once loaded, let's make sure it's on so we can hear the pedal. We'll do that by pressing the power icon on the right hand side of the window. It looks like we do have a distortion pedal already loaded into our signal chain, but I'm pretty sure this isn't the exact one that we want. So to change models, let's press the distortion icon on the left hand side of the window and find the classic distortion HD model. Double tap it to load it or press once and then select done. Let's make a couple tweaks here by reducing the drive, bringing the bass up, and reducing the filter, treble, and output parameters. <laughs> Now let's look to the far right of our signal chain and we'll tap to select the block labeled Reverb. We'll change this King Spring model out by pressing the Reverb icon on the left hand side of the window and scrolling up until we see the Hall HD Reverb model. Double tap to select. We'll make a few small adjustments of reducing the decay, the pre-delay, and the tone, but leaving the mix where it is. And don't forget to turn this effect on by pressing the power icon on the right hand side of the window. <laughs> Now let's set up our noise gate by selecting the block labeled gate in our signal chain. Generally I like to set this up with the decay all the way down at zero and I adjust the threshold to taste depending on how much noise my guitar is making. Remember for the noise gate to do its job we still want to turn it on so press the power icon on the right hand side of the window. Once our tone is set up we're going to want to save it and we'll do that by pressing the save info icon at the bottom of the window. Now look to the upper left hand side of the screen and see a spot that says save my tone to. Tap that to open up your save options. You can choose to save this tone to your Line 6 account or store it directly on your Firehawk FX hardware. Now if you take the time to fill out all the meta information on the tone that you just created, you can actually share this tone with other Firehawk FX users. To do this, we'll look to the upper right hand corner of our window and press the button that says share. This will give us the option to either store it on Line 6's tone cloud where it's searchable by other Firehawk FX users based on the information that you filled out, or you can post the tone directly to Twitter or Facebook. That brings us to the end of this tone creation video for the Firehawk FX. Remember though, at the end of the day, it's completely up to you and your ears to decide what sounds best and what works for you. So I encourage everybody to download this tone and use it as a starting point and tweak it as much as you'd like. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the rest of Line 6's tone creation videos, and thank you for taking the time to watch this one.